called there an harlot and went in unto her. Then went Samson to Gaza and saw there an harlot. The harlot is a prostitute, woman of the night, whatever you want to call them, street woman, okay, loose woman, okay. Because, you know, the prostitute ain't just the woman that's on the corner, you know. <laughs> Folks, they, they slick prostitute right. now, you know. Yeah. You take me out to dinner, I give you some, that's right. the same yes, thing. Yes. You buy me this, you come on, somebody. Yep. Hey, just come on. Yeah, And it was told the Gazite saying, si Samson has come hither. And they compassed him and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city and were quiet all the night, saying in the morning, when in this day we shall kill him. And Samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders and carried them up to the top of the hill that is before Hebron. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sur. The fact that she's in the valley should have gave him a hint. Come on, somebody. Whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him and see wherein his great strength lies. And by what means we may prevail against him that we may bind him to afflict him. And we will give thee every, every one of us 1,100 pieces of silver. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy strength, great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green wits that, have never been, that have, were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green wits, which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now there were men lying in wait. The enemy lying in wait, men, waiting for you to slip up. Abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he break the wits as a thread of toe is broken when it touches the fire. He snapped it quick. So his strength was, was not known. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. He said, Look, you done made me look bad. You done told you didn't tell me the truth. He said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait abiding in the chamber. And he broke them from off his arms like a thread. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith <laughs> thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, if thou weaveth the seven locks of my head with the web, and she fastened it with the pen, and said unto him, The Philistine, Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awaked out of his sleep, and went away with the pen of the beam, and with the web. And she said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee, when thou heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lies. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily, daily, with her words. She nagged him and nagged him and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. He's like, I'm tired of this. Enough of this. She broke him down. Hmm? Come on now. Don't think these women can't break you down, man. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell you something. You, you keep playing around, flirting around, you mess around, and you're going to be caught up in something. Don't think they can't break you down. Don't think they can't get to you. <laughs> the Word of God was written for our example. Amen. The story is in the Bible for our example, me. 
Verse 17, that he told her all his heart and said unto her, There has not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. A Nazarite was a, was a, was a child with people, they, they never cut their hair. Okay? That's what made them Nazarites. They, they never cut them, their hair. And the word Nazarite, you can trace that all the way up to the New Testament word of Nazareth. Our Lord and Savior, he's from what? Jesus called Jesus what? Of Nazareth. Okay? He says, it, if I be shaven, when my strength, then my strength will go from me and I shall become weak and be like any other man. Well, he's told him the truth. now. Verse 18. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he that showed me all his heart, for he had showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up, un, up unto her and brought money in her in their hand. And she made him sleep, look at that, upon her knees in his lap, in her lap. And she called for a man. And she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him. And his strength went from him. And she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wished not that the Lord was departed from him. His anointing was gone. I wish I had time to talk about the difference between the gifts and the anointing, but peop many people, many of us people have gifts, and the Word of God says that the gifts are without repentance. You, 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 you're just given a gift naturally. You, you, you can die with the gift. Don't mean you'll ever be a blessing to anybody, but it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. It's the anointing that makes really the difference, okay? So now he has no more anointing. So as the story goes on, you can read it more that they came upon Samson. Now he's lost his anointing. He lost all of his strength. And they came upon him and they seized him and they gouged his eyes out. They take his sight from him. And they afflict him as they want to do. They make him do their work for him. You know, they persecute him and they, they, you know, they Afflicted. And all this happened, men, because of the lie. This was the strange woman. The strange woman. And once they get the secret to your anointing, men, then they're able to control it. But what's my anointing? I'm not Samson. I'm not strong. I can't tear the doors off, nothing like that. I'm, that's not my anointing. What's your anointing? Your anointing is just being a man of God. That's what your anointing is. And how do they get that anointing off of you? By getting you to disobey God. That's the secret to our anointing. Man. A woman can get you to disobey God, that anointing will come off of you. And when that anointing leaves, guess what? The enemy can come in and do what he wants with you. The story goes on to Samson. And, and I, 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 I like to say that this, you know, this is, you know, I guess you see a movie, you want the movie to end good. You know how you see a movie sometimes? Mm -hmm. You want to have a good ending. You know, it's been a been bad things going on. And this movie, to me, this story does have a pretty good ending because what they fail to realize is that his hair is growing back. Okay? And his hair, as his hair grows back, guess what? His strength grows back. However, he still has no more sight now because they've gouged his eyes out. But his prayer and his repentance unto the Lord is and I believe, it's not written, but I believe Samson repented unto the Lord and realized the mistake that he had made. 
And he just said, had one final request. Lord, let me take these Philistines down with me when I go. <laughs> so as he knows that his strength is growing back, Brother Harris, he ain't saying nothing. He just keep doing what they want him to do. But when he feels that his anointing has come back upon him enough to do what he used to do, that's when he did that thing. He went out there, and the word of God said he got between the two main pillars of the building, and he just pushed them down. And the whole building came down on him and everybody. Sacrificing still. Which lets us know that even though we mess up, man, listen to me, man, you can get that Norton back. All you got to do is repent, and the Lord will give it back to you. But if you never repent, you'll never receive the anointing of you. And that's where your strength and that's where your power lies. Let's give God a hand clap. for praise. And we realize that we have more single people here than married. And, and that's sad and with that being said that we we know that a lot of I'm going to talk we talk about the men I'm going to talk about the women just from a practical standpoint women love they want to be loved and it, I want to see the hands of a females here who do not want companionship true companionship there are none because all women want to be loved and it was Studies done that says that a lot of female girls they um, they fall into the hands of the wrong guy because they didn't have a father in the house. I beg to differ. Amen. I didn't have a father in the house, but I do have a good godly man. Amen. You know, science statistics are true to a certain degree; they really are. But I find it that a lot of times, when a when a female doesn't have a a male figure in the house, they call a father, they, they're looking for love. They're looking for that father figure in someone else. And they gravitate to whomever. A lot of times they fall prey and victims to the wrong kind of man because they want love so bad. Women do not have to give themselves over. You remain pure. They're lonely. Yeah, there are lonely times. But we know that God said he's with us always. And nothing wrong with being lonely. That's the emotion. That's, that's how he made us. We have emotion. We have that soft side. We love. We love hard. We love hard. And we, we want to receive that same love that we give. It's true. But God, he'll give it to you, but he wants you to wait. He prepares. Don't, don't, don't just fall because he has a special somebody just for you. But a lot of times we just go for anything. I know it. I grew up high school, I'm, I can um, only imagine. I can only, there's a song, there's, I can only imagine. I can really only imagine, because I'm not in the school system, but I hear things. I know what we did in school. And it wasn't, I didn't have, we didn't have this platform, people teaching you, you know, you see it on the little gruff, the dog on the gruff, just say no to drugs. But they didn't talk about sex. They didn't talk about sex. They didn't. But we have it here, and I hear the things that's going on in the schools. I'm not just, I'm going to get to the grown folk, but in school, what they're doing in school. I know what we did after the basketball game. Can't wait to the prom. I know what we did. Behind the bleachers at the football game. Do they still do that? I don't know. But I believe, I want to believe that it gets wickeder than wickeder. Is that a word? Wickeder. They still do it. Amen. They say still going on. But young women, come on. Young girls, I'm going to start with our young girls. Stand up, young girls. Most of them on the back row. We should have put them on the front. You know what? We should have put them all on the front. Young. Look at all these young. I don't, don't want to call you out. Okay, amen. Look at, okay, give God. Now. We have youth conferences and youth come. Y'all have to be shy. You can look at me. Pastor just said I was cute, so y'all can look at me. You know, some people it's hard to look at me. Okay, but you can you can look at me. 
because I y'all know I love you, and it was is nothing, Brittany, that I won't say to you, amen. But it's for your good. It's not that we're trying to be hard on you, Osha. Osha, no. I'm like, girl, you better come. Look, Osha, what brace you? Okay. But y'all need to realize that in the in the conference, if you come, what did they say? I am what? I am what? Do you believe that you are? Don't you know a diamond is something precious? You know, he better put a ring on it. Because we want a diamond on our finger. We think that's something special, don't we? What you say about Beyonce, what? But you got to realize how precious and valuable you are. It doesn't matter about a guy. It doesn't matter about a guy, Cynthia. It does not matter. You made a hand when he broke your heart. You gave your heart to him. Uh, you probably did it. In the back seat. Kissing, going too far, pushing the buttons, those boundaries, those sexual boundaries. What they call them today? Um, what they call it? They don't know. Yeah, messing around. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, but I'm just saying. I was just wanting them to talk. But you know those are sexual, those are dangerous territories. I don't care, you may not call it, uh, well, we didn't have sex, but you pushing a boundary. You can go there and then you don't give yourself to anybody. You need to be virtuous. Hold on, hold yourself. I love me some me. Nobody other than God is going to love you better than you. Nobody. You should love yourself. So that means everything, anything that's valuable to me, I'm going to hold, I'm going to protect. I'm going to try to protect it. You know, you put it in a uh, safe deposit box or a treasure. You know how they have treasure chest, something that you want to hold and keep. Young ladies, amen. It doesn't matter. If you don't have a guy, that's okay. He coming. He on the way. You got to hold on. God has something special for you. Don't give it up. Stop, stop today. Every Sunday we say stop today. You can stop today. You can begin again today because we're, gonna, we're trying to get, renew your minds. Purity. That's where we're going from because we're going to have a purity ceremony, young ladies. And you know, if you don't, if the Lord hadn't spoke to your heart, we said, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. He may not be speaking. Well, he's always speaking, but you're not always hearing. Amen? But you can stop. It doesn't matter. He might get mad, whatever. Let him. But one thing about it, he'll respect you for it. He will respect you for it. He does not, guys, do not respect a girl who is easy. They don't, he talk about you. That's what he does. And he let the other guys, his friend, know, man, go on over there. She, she easy. You, you can have a good time with her. He does not respect you. He talks about you. So it's not about all that. You better get some word in you. And I'm, we're not condemning. We're not judging you. That is not what this is about. We're just trying to give you some true word today. All this month is true. We want you to be valuable. Realize how special that you are. You are really special. He, he loves you. He can, who can't give you better love than God? Who? Who? He got it all. He, man, this man is rich. You know, we want somebody who got something. You think God don't have it? Y'all know. Y'all want y'all hair did. Nails done. These little <laughs> They, they getting y'all nails done, y'all hair done. Our mom hmm? and dad is still doing mom it. Mom and dad are doing it. So when you want somebody who own all the count of a thousand heels, he got everything, he's in control. That's who you used to. Now, I don't, call, I don't know, because some of y'all might have somebody like this. But I'm trying to tell you, some a guy, um, uh, if you hold out, trust me, he will respect you for it. And later in life, he's going to be looking for you. And he's going to realize, I missed a good one. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Single women, stand up. Come on, single women. Don't be shamed. We ain't even trying to single you out for nothing bad. Amen. Keisha, single. Is you single? You single? Single. <laughs> These are married. You know how to define single? Single. Let's go. Oh, it's not that many as I thought. Amen. Amen. God is good. I want y'all to know, you know, you all are at a, 
All of you all have had babies before. Yeah, okay, I want to make sure. But um, all of us, some of you all has been married before. Amen. God has not forgotten you. He has not forsaken you. He hasn't. He just wants you to hold on, be strong, hold tight, it's going to be all right. Hold out, don't pout. Amen? But you got to re- remain pure. He honors that. And it gets hard.